Good morning. Welcome to Sudan Pilgrims of Zion Church for this Holy Trinity service. And what promises to be quite a lovely day. Sometimes think that if God's not going to send us rain, he should send us days like this. On behalf of the team that worked so diligently to put this together, we'd like to welcome our online viewers, our Cambrai brethren and our regular visitors, and certainly hope that you enjoy today and choose to worship with us again. Today's service will be run by Pastor Owen Shermer, and without any further ado, I'll pass over to the good pastor. Today is Holy Trinity, and uh, we will be giving glory to our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So praise the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord forever. And praise the Lord in the heights of heaven. Praise and adore him forever. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Praise and adore him forever. He was and is and is to come. Praise and adore him forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us continue as we sing another of the Trinity songs, Holy, Holy. Friends in Christ, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And therefore let us confess our sins to God our Father and ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. We confess that we are born in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart and we have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. 
we deserve your eternal punishment. And for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. Amen. And I now ask each of you in the presence of God who searches the heart, do you confess that you have sinned and do you repent of your sins? I do. Do you believe that Jesus Christ has redeemed you from all your sins and do you desire forgiveness in his name? I do. You? Do you intend, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to live as in God's presence and to strive daily to lead a holy life even as Christ has made you holy. I do. do. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God to all of you, and on behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. Let us read together now responsively the verses of Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice, the voice of, of the Lord, Lord flashes forth flames of fire. And the voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. And the voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. And may the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have given us faith to affirm the glory of the eternal Trinity and to worship you as one. Keep us firm in this faith and safe with you forever. For you live and reign one God, now and forever. Amen. And we'll now listen to the reading of the lessons for this Trinity Sunday. The first reading for the Festival of Holy Trinity is written in the Old Testament book of Isaiah, Chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The second reading is written in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for Trinity Sunday is found in John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, and he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, but no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, but what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, and yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things you do, and, do, you, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended to the Father except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of God. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Thank, Thank you, Lord, Lord Jesus, for coming from the Father as Saviour. Saviour. May we be born again by your Spirit. Spirit. Amen. And uh, we continue as we sing, O Father, my Father, I call on your name.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The theme of this message as we contemplate the wonderful gift and mystery of the Holy Trinity is still God understands us. And I'd like to reflect on the gospel lesson and I've just selected a few verses out of this that uh, at least mention spirit and, and son and, uh, and father. I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And Father in heaven, make and keep us holy through your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. In Christ Jesus, dear friends, in the end, it's nothing surprising that we have so much trouble understanding God. The simple question is, what sort of a God would he be if we could understand him? It's not a mystery that the Godhead is a mystery. And nevertheless, countless people dismiss God altogether because they don't have their answers, because they don't understand him. They are offended that God should be beyond their ability to understand him. And so they debate and they argue and they form and they hold their dismissive opinions. Our Christian perspective is not so indulgent. As we reserve our greatest wonder for the revelation that God understands us. And the further great mystery that he should so much love us who could be so antagonistic and indifferent towards him. And it's against this background that we come today to worship and celebrate our triune God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The one true God, the ever mysterious God, who reveals himself in love to us in three persons. We will never understand him, but he lovingly understands us. And so we say to him be the glory. Today's Gospel recounts the story of Nicodemus, a man who came to Jesus by night to find out who Jesus really was. And it was a tense meeting. Nicodemus was another person for questions and he was not really for mysteries. He wanted to know and understand. He wanted to clear this whole matter up and puzzled by Jesus' authoritative teaching and also his miraculous signs, he was putting it to Jesus Please explain. And although it seems Nicodemus would come to believe in Jesus, 
because we know that it was Nicodemus who later defended Jesus and got possession of his body for burial, as a member of the Jewish ruling council, Nicodemus was not one readily to embrace Jesus without the answers he was looking for. Nicodemus was one who came to argue and to get on top of Jesus. This encounter is a significant encounter because it's so typical. You might think of it as something happening to others, but in many ways it's like we are. How many others, how many of us, don't come before God asking, please explain? There is certainly a background suggestion that somehow or other God should be responsible and accountable to us rather than the other way round. If you know the last part of the story of Job, you will recognise some of the same tension that's there. Until God had to take Job aside and assert his wisdom and his authority and his sovereignty. In my words, but this is the gist of it. So Job, you persist in raising questions with me and of me. So Job, I'm going to ask you a few questions if you consider yourselves so wise as to question me. And he goes on to ask Job, well, where were you when the world began? How can you put the trees where they are? And the interesting thing is that Job was dumbstruck because he realised that he knew so little and God knew so much. Nicodemus was also one who probably should have known about that and known better. And so he found his match with Jesus because Jesus turned the questions back on him. You're a teacher of Israel and you don't understand these things. The relationship between flesh and spirit. Of all people, Nicodemus should have understand, stood such spiritual realities as he was seeing them unfold in Jesus. Spiritual realities well known and inherent as they were in Israel's faith concerning the spiritual relationship between God and his people, the balance between spirit and flesh. Nicodemus came to Jesus to discover that he was not greater than Jesus. Jesus, who really is the teacher of teachers. For Nicodemus to grow in any understanding, it was something that he had to learn was to become a disciple and to learn what Jesus was here to teach and to demonstrate. We only learn from God when we are under God. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born again, unless he's born of water and of the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. And so more important than our mere human questions and explanations that we might ask of God are the gracious gifts of His Spirit that He's chosen to give to us through His Son. Don't listen to all the questions, but make sure you listen to all the answers that God has to give to us. And he will give us answers to questions we don't ask, but they're more important than the questions we ask. What many people want God to explain might not add up to a single thing for, all, for their final enlightenment. 
You might think, well, if I know that answer, I'll know all answers. But you might know nothing at the end of it. All of our whys, our wants, our whens and whats and wherefores. But what will make the difference is what God has for us. This is my answer for you, God says. And so Nicodemus would never be wiser to come arguing the way he did. And it's only as he listened to Jesus, the teacher. I know you're a teacher, he said. Well, if he is a teacher, then listen to him, learn from him. Would he begin to understand the things that mattered? For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. That's the answer. We didn't even ask that question. Unfolding, dear friends, out of all of this is the God we describe as triune. God the Father who gives us His Son. God the Son, born and living among us and lifted upon a cross for us. And God the Spirit, who is with us, who breathes Jesus' resurrection life into us. We don't need to ask how or why or whatever more or for whatever, more than we need to be assured that this is God for us. By water and the Spirit, We are given a new birth, a new chance, a new life. The breath of God breathing the life of the resurrected Jesus recreates us. We are not walking as humans any longer. We're walking as children of God. We have the divine living within us. And so the risen Christ appeared to his disciples and he breathed upon them as the Spirit was breathing at the beginning of creation. Receive the Holy Spirit. Something happens. Indeed, Jesus is the one who came into our experience, our living experience, to share and impart God's life with us and in us. We're not expected to reach up to heaven to find out about God. For God has come from heaven to show us how he understands us, how he loves us and cares for us. And Jesus tells us and shows us these heavenly things now and forever. The life that matters more than we can ever ask or fully understand. Many years before the incident of today's gospel, the prophet Jeremiah wrote, this is what the Lord writes. This is what he says. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom or the strong man of his strength or the rich man about his riches. But let him boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice and righteousness on earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. And this Lord is our triune God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And by his Spirit, He abides with us and in us. And even so, we worship, we praise, we serve and we obey him, who is the king, who is the eternal, the immortal, the invisible, the only God, 
to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. And so may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. On our uh, PowerPoint today, we have the Athanasian Creed. And I've thought a lot about saying this today, but I'm going to spare you. And I'm going to give you a little lesson about what's going on here. Do you mind seating again? And I'll just explain a couple of things to you. At the time of the Reformation, it was very important for the Lutheran reformers to identify the, with the fact that they were not trying to create a new religion. Uh, by breaking away from the Catholic Church, it was like you're going, you're going your own way. But they needed to say, we belong to the church that's always been the church. And so right at the beginning of the Lutheran Confessions, they say we affirm the three ecumenical creeds of the Christian church. There were three of them. There was the Apostles' Creed. There was another creed called the Nicene Creed. And there, mysteriously, for everyone then, and also for most of us now, was a creed they called the Athanasian Creed. The reason that these creeds were there was that they were generally regarded as a fair statement of the Christian faith, but also a definition of the triune God. We do not know much about the origins of the Apostles' Creed. Somehow or other, it's always been there. It seems to go right back to the very beginning. It's almost as old as the Scriptures themselves, that when children were baptised, there was a confession made. And the confession was simply with the first person. I believe in God the Father. I believe in Jesus Christ, his Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. As time went by, almost a thousand years in fact, there ended up a great controversy in the church about whether Jesus, how he was the Son of God and how he was a true human being. And that was a great controversy because how do you explain that he is true God and true man? And at about the time of uh, Constantine, when he declared that the whole world will now be Christian, uh, there were great debates in the church. And that gave rise to a time where there was great argument about the Trinity and also about Jesus himself. And after many, many years of debate, there was a creed developed which was called the Nicene Creed. And it's always interesting that the Nicene Creed begins not with I believe, but we believe, because it was a confession of the church. And, and, and we confess that creed probably more often than most of the creeds that we confess. And, and so that creed explains more clearly who Jesus is. And this leaves us now with the Athanasian Creed. What do we know about it? Interestingly, nobody knows much about it at all. It wasn't written by Athanasius, who was one of the church fathers who was very much involved with the writing and development of the Nicene Creed, but it was a creed that somehow or other was there. We only know it basically from about the 8th century. We don't know how it got there, but somehow or other it gained a certain acceptance, particularly in the Roman or the Western church. And... Uh, and, and, and it's, it's a great, 
ex explanation of, of who God is and who he is not and everything like that. It is very rarely used. Uh, it never was re used much at all, but it was regarded as a good document, a good explanation. If we read this today, by the time we're finished, you will wonder whether your tongues are getting twisted. That's a fact, isn't it? It's very hard to do that. In the sermon today, I've simply said, God is the God who comes to us. He is the God who has reached out to us through his Son and who is with us in this church today in his Spirit who speaks to us. And rather than being complicated, let us just together confess the simplest of all the creeds, the Apostles' Creed. It's the faith of our baptism. It acknowledges God the Father, who is our Creator. It acknowledges Jesus, who is our Saviour. And it acknowledges the Holy Spirit, who is with us and lives through the church and in our hearts. So I invite you with me to confess the Apostles' Creed. I don't think you need to read it. We will confess it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And there you have it. That's as good as it gets. Let us now continue as we sing the next hymn and during that we will make our offerings as well.
loving triune God, teach us, your children, to praise and glorify you with our lives and all that we have by serving others. Amen. God our Father created us and in his love he sent his Son to redeem us. And now he gathers together his holy people by the power of his Spirit. And let us therefore come to him in the Spirit through the name of Jesus and ask for all our needs. Loving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, in the scriptures you show us that you are really what you are really like so that we can be friends and not strangers. We risk, or you risk, letting us see into your heart to experience your caring love. You risk taking the first step so that we can trust you. And you reveal your hopes and dreams for sinful human beings. So therefore, Heavenly Father, thank you for making yourself and your life-giving love known through your mighty works. Continue to show yourself to the world by spreading the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep us and all pastors and teachers of the church true to the Trinitarian faith so that the community of the church may flow from the community of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring all people to accept the world as your wonderful gift and move us to preserve its beauty and diversity. Guide scientists as they investigate and manipulate your creation and give success to all worthwhile agriculture, commerce and industry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that all people may value human life as made in your image. Correct the abuse and misuse of human life in the world and bring peace where there is conflict. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for our families and friends and for all relationships that express your love. Bless those on whom we depend for daily companionship and love and all those with whom we live and work and learn and play. Unite our congregation in a community of love and care, opening our arms outwards as we also grow deeper in the riches of your love for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. Father, we pray for all people in need, for the friendless and the lonely, those who are aged, frail and confined, for the sparing and for those who mourn, for all in pain, for all the, who are sick and who, for all who are dying. Bring them to seek their hope and strength in our Lord Jesus Christ and meet their needs. Help us to set aside selfishness so that we may bear one another's troubles and griefs. And we pray especially for those of our own congregation and parish in any of these needs and for those that we would pray for silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the promises of rain which herald a new planting season and continue to refresh our land as we seek to provide for those things that sustain the daily life of our world and our community. Provide also us with pastors to serve us with your living word and guide those that we would call into this parish to see the needs of this parish in the calling process. And so, Lord God, you are the ground of our existence. You are the foundation of our faith. Support us in this faith as we live in your name. 
for you are Father, Son, and Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for Holy Communion, we'll sing the hymn, Bread of Heaven. be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord and let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give our thanks and praise it is indeed right and good Lord God Holy Father that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you through Jesus Christ our Lord who with you and the Holy Spirit is one God, one Lord, whom we confess as the only true God and worship as the eternal Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we adore and we praise your glorious name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Gracious Father, we therefore remember the sacrifice of our Lord in celebration as we receive his body and blood with this bread and wine. We rejoice to receive all that he has done for us in his life and death, his resurrection and ascension, and we wait for his coming again to share with us the heavenly feast. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we who receive the body and blood of Christ may live as true members 
of the body of your Son. Amen. And through Jesus Christ, we have access to the Father by the one Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Come, for everything is now ready.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you have revealed yourself to us today in the word and sacrament as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and you live in the perfect unity of love. Give us a sure faith in you so that we share in your holy fellowship in the life of three persons in one God, now and forever. Amen. May God, the Holy Trinity, who has created, redeemed and sanctified you, bring you to know and adore him as one God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And the Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. We continue now with our final hymn.